Okay, and now we're recording. And we'll start slow while our, our friends are still joining. Um, but welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here, everyone. We are at the meeting number four of the 8617 Stockton Steering Committee. Um, tonight, we're going to cover fewer topics so we have enough time to have deeper dialogue. So um, we're basically going to do the welcome and introduction. And then we're going to go over some community emissions inventory historical air quality overview. And there'll be a couple presentations. And then um, our last big piece today will be sources of air quality concern, which I know is a topic that's really important to many of us. And after doing a very brief presentation, we're going to go into the breakout groups that we attempted to do last time, but we ran out of time. So we're definitely going to do the breakout sessions today. And then we'll do wrap up and next steps. And of course, uh, have some time for public comments at the end. So my, my name is Crystal Love Lazard. I am one of your facilitators. I'm with the Institute for Local Government, for those of you who don't know me. And I'm also introducing my colleague, Hannah Sivakovich. Hannah is going to take us into the next step. Hello. Welcome, everyone. We just wanted to go briefly over Zoom etiquette. I know this is uh, not our first meeting, but just a friendly reminder. Please don't forget to rename yourself, your first name, your last name, and organization F, if applicable. And also, we're asking committee members to indicate that you're a committee member by putting uh, SCSC, uh, uh, Stockton Steering Committee abbreviation, uh, after your name. So in this way, we get to know each other because we're still learning who we are. Also, please don't remember, please don't forget to mute yourself. Uh, I'm going to be checking throughout the meeting and muting you folks. So we're not hearing uh, background noise. Sometimes we forget to mute ourselves. Please remember to raise your blue hand if you have any questions and to get to your blue hand, go on the bottom of the screen and click participants. You're going to have a panel on the right hand side popping up and that's on the bottom of the right hand panel. You're going to see the blue hand. Again, we're monitoring our participants panel throughout the meeting and we're going to be paying attention who is uh, raising the blue hand and have questions and we're going to be calling you folks out and helping you to unmute yourself. Please use the chat box to communicate if you have any questions, if you would like to make uh, comments, uh, please be specific to the agenda item tonight. Remember the chat box, the transcripts are recorded from the chat box and they are public and they are referenced in the minutes. After this meeting. If you need to leave early this meeting, just please send me a note you don't, or to me or to the entire participants and let us know that you're heading out. And okay. if you have any questions, if you have any, if you have technical difficulties, please feel free just to chat with me privately and I will help you to resolve this technical difficulties in real time. Hannah, do you want to go ahead and launch the poll? Yes, we're going to go ahead and launch the poll and ask you about your preferred preference for the meeting times on July first, our next meeting. Okay, so I'm launching the poll. You should see, see it on your screen now. For the committee members, please go ahead and vote on your preferred meeting time for July 1st. And please maybe refrain from voting if you are not a committee member. You can just click the X in the upper right hand corner of the box. Great. Thanks, Jessica, for clarifying. And if you're a committee member who are on the phone, go ahead and unmute yourself and let us know your preferred meeting time so we can uh, record your vote because you cannot vote when you're on the phone. It's a little tricky. And the assumption we're making is that the July 1st meeting will be another virtual meeting similar to this one. Um, we are continuing to observe all uh, state and local guidelines and trying to stay up to date um, what the uh, advice is from our county health officers. So for now, it's virtual. Okay, I still see several polling results coming in. Let's take another maybe 15 seconds.
Okay, no results. I see 25 members voted. I think we're good. We're gonna go ahead and end this poll. Great, thank you so much for sharing your practice. Davis, I couldn't really hear you, but I think you said you didn't get the opportunity to vote. Yes. And if then we will follow up with you afterwards. So don't worry about that. We'll follow up. No, and if anybody else didn't let me. Okay. It won't. Yeah, we'll follow up. If if anybody didn't get an opportunity to vote, you can express your preference for the meeting time, um, be it three to five p.m., four to six p.m., or five to seven p.m. via the chat box, or just let us know that you had a technical issue, and we will follow up with you after this. So no worries there. Um, Okay, so we're gonna stop that and share the roster. Okay, so for tonight, um, we have more than 70 people currently. And so in the interest of time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take role of the community steering committee members um, by calling off names. And we're just gonna ask that you um, indicate if you're here or not by, um, either giving a thumbs up or like the wave. It's one of the um, kind of reactions that are in the bottom gray box at the bottom of your screen. And if you are not a community, community steering committee member, you're gonna have the opportunity to introduce yourself to others during the breakout room. So this time, that's what we're gonna do. I see Willie's raising his hand. I see that you're here. I'm gonna read down this list just so everyone gets a little more familiar. I know a lot of you know each other, but um, I, we need to understand um, and, and get to know everyone better. So, okay, and I'm gonna butcher your name, so I apologize in advance. Um, Jasari, are you here? Just do, you can either like wave in real life or just wave, wave your yellow hand or your, your upload hand. Uh, Gloria, Gloria E, Nayeli, Donald, Mary, Jennifer, we're watching, Eugene, Regina, Alfred, Nicholas, Ned, awesome, hi Ned, and then Michaela, his alternate, okay, Anthony, Missy Ray, Willie, I think I already saw you wave. You're very prompt. Bianca, Vanessa, Stacy, Margo. Here. Stevie. Awesome. Hi, Margo. Florence. Jalen. Leonard. Glenna Bell. And Douglas. Here. Awesome, thanks Douglas. Okay, and our others, Alyssa, Kevin, Jordan, Irene, Sylvia, um, Dylan. Here. Awesome, hi Dylan. Hey. Diamond. Hello. Naomi. Naomi's here. Hi. Catherine. Hi. Hi. Uh, is your alternate Cynthia here? Here. Okay. Hi, Cynthia. Tina, I think I saw you wait. I'm here. Awesome. And then Mariah. And Barbara, your alternate, is she here tonight? Nope, just me. Just you. Um, Ellen. Jonathan. Kendra, thank you. Esperanza, I think SC wasn't going to be here. Um, Ed, and then Veronica Savard, and Cynthia Lau. Okay.
Awesome. All right. So I'm going to turn it over to Ryan. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Ryan for the Air District. Welcome. Uh, I'll keep it short because we have a, a packed meeting. I just want to express our gratitude as an agency that uh, we have 78 people here looking to, to work together to improve the air quality uh, in the, the Stockton area. Um, the kind of the focus of this meeting will be to continue providing background information on why we're here, what are the sources of, of air pollution that are impacting uh, the Stockton community. Um, and as well as, uh, you know, thanking everybody for taking the time to use the tool that we provided uh, that uh, uh, showed sources of air quality concern and, and uh, continue that discussion during this meeting and uh, just looking forward to the opportunity to work in smaller groups with uh, the community steering committee members so that uh, hopefully we can all get to know each other a little bit better and um, use these uh, different opportunities. So. Uh, once again, thank you so much for, for being here tonight and taking the time to, to spend with us. Thanks, Ryan. Yes, so much thanks. Um, next, I'm going to turn it over to Mariah Looney. If you recall, if you were with us in, in May, Mariah kindly volunteered to be our community co-host tonight. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariah Looney. I'm the campaign coordinator for Restore the Delta um, and tonight's community co-host. Um, I'm going to keep it brief. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, there are 78 of us, which is an incredible turnout. And uh, considering the state of the world right now, um, I appreciate you all dedicating time and uh, just being here and showing up. Stockton is no um, stranger to environmental racism. And so I really appreciate CARB and um, the Air District and everybody putting this together to help combat a lot of the wrongs that have been done to our community. And I really appreciate um, the residents especially for being here and I'm looking forward to tonight. Thanks, Mariah. That was perfect. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to what we have next. So our Community Emissions Inventory Historical Air Quality Overview, part of the agenda. Um, first up is gonna be John Claffin. John, do you wanna share your screen? Thanks, Crystal. Yeah, let me, can you hear me okay? I'm seeing yeah. some nodding heads and let me share the presentation here. Can you guys see the presentation? Yes. Yep. Yes. All right. Great. Uh, thanks, Crystal. And um, good, e good evening, everybody. I'm glad I could be here tonight. Great to see so many people here for the, the meeting tonight. Um, I'm the Director of Air Quality Science and Planning at the Air District, and I had the pleasure of talking with, with you last at last month's meeting about air monitoring and what that could look like for the community of Stockton as we set up our community air monitoring network and our plan together. Um, but what we wanted to do tonight before we talk about emissions inventory and learning more about how that is developed specifically um, for the Stockton area and what it looks like, we wanted to provide a little bit of historical context of what air quality has looked like in Stockton over time looking way back in the past decades ago versus where we are now, just to give everybody a perspective of how much things have improved for air quality in Stockton while still thinking about where we need to go next to continue to improve air quality in the area. Um, just as a quick, quick reminder, um, I showed this at the, the last time we met. Um, this is the boundary of our Stockton community that we're working with. There is an existing air monitoring site in the area that's at, it's called Stockton Hazleton. You can see where it's, it's pinned there on the map. And this site has been in operation um, since the 70s. It's operated by the California Air Resources Board. And this is a part of the regulatory air monitoring network that operates in the, in the San Joaquin Valley. And it, it has measured a number of pollutants over time. Um, it measures a number of what's called criteria pollutants. That's defined by the US EPA. Examples of that are ozone, NO, NO2, and NOx, carbon monoxide, PM2.5, PM10, different toxics and meteorology. This site is located near Wilson and Hazel, Hazleton Avenues, as you can see on the map there, and it's at the San Joaquin County Public Health Building. And ongoing, operation, ongoing operations at this site are going to um, complement well the work that we're gonna do in putting together our community air monitoring um, network together as we work with the committee here. And if you're curious and looking at the historical data for this site that's within the community, there's a link here to CARB's website where you can um, 
look up historical data for the site for these different pollutants. So just wanted to quickly go over a, a few slides here to showing some different trends of, of air quality, um, specific, specifically for a number of criteria pollutants, as well as a few toxics in the area to let you know how, how things have changed in, in the area over time. So this is, this is showing ozone averaged for eight hours um, for a day. And this is a, a standard that is set by, by EPA. Um, the original standard for this was set in 1997, set at 84 parts per billion. As you can see in the, in the chart here on that top dashed yellow line, um, as you look down, the standard has changed. In 2008, that was strengthened to 75 parts per billion. And then just a few years ago, that was strengthened to 70 parts per billion in 2015. So if you look back in time on the left-hand side, back in the late 70s, early 80s, ozone in Stockton was, was 95 parts per billion at its peak. That has decreased dramatically over time, where in this community, the ozone levels are now below all three of those federal standards, which, which is good to see. So big changes in ozone over time. This, this represents about a 31% decrease in these peak ozone concentrations in the community. PM 2.5 is also a criteria pollutant um, that's defined by EPA. And this is for an annual average of PM 2.5, where we look at PM 2.5 over, over, over an entire calendar year. <clears throat> And there are two standards for this. The first was set in 1997 by EPA, set at 15 micrograms. That's that top uh, green line dashed there. Below there, you can see that the new standard that was set in 2012, set at 12 micrograms per meter cubed. You can see the trend here over time. Uh, PM 2.5 first began to be measured in the San Joaquin Valley in the early 2000s. And you can see the trend here where early, in the early time frame here, we were above that 15 microgram threshold. We've, we've come below that, which is great and we're getting closer to attaining and getting close to that 12 microgram threshold. We did want to point out that in these past few years, we have seen the number come up here in Stockton that was mainly driven by wildfires in the area. Uh, many of you probably remember the campfire just about a year and a half ago, um, very devastating fire and the air quality impacts to the state and the northern part of the San Joaquin Valley was very severe. And so those, those PM 2.5 numbers that were very high have driven up this number a little bit, as you can see that spike over the last few years. And we see the same trend here for the other um, type of PM 2.5 standard, which is for a 24 hour um, measurement. So instead of averaging for an entire year, we just look at one day. We can see this trend over time that, and there's two standards for this too, I wanted to point out. One set at 65 micrograms, that's that dashed green line. And the current standard is at um, 35 micrograms, that dashed orange line below. So throughout this whole period, we've been in, in attainment of the 65 microgram standard. We're meeting that one, which is good, but we're continuing to make progress towards meeting that, that um, more stringent 35 microgram standard. And you can see the past few years, we've had the similar, similar spike driven by a lot of those wildfire um, emissions that came from 2018. A few other um, pollutants to look at, this is carbon monoxide. Um, starting in the, the mid 70s uh, all the way to where we are now. Um, so big changes here as well. The standard for this is at nine parts per million for an eight hour average. And we can see in the past, we used to have eight hour averages at 18 parts per million. We're now well below that where our, our, our highest values for the year are, aren't, aren't even at two parts per million. And this represents about a 93% decrease in carbon monoxide in the area over this time period, over these um, over 40 years. Similar for nitrogen dioxide, this is averaged over a one hour time period. Looking back in time to the late 70s all the way to where we are now, over this 40 plus year time period, carbon uh, nitrogen dioxide levels have reduced by um, over 70% and we are um, meeting that, that 100 parts per billion standard, which is good to see. Just a few charts here for um, a few toxics we want, I wanted to show. Um, there's a few toxics I wanna show that have a really good continuous uh, record um, of time where we were able to go back to the late 80s uh, based on these measurements. And this is a, a trend of benzene measurements in Stockton. This is showing the 90th percentile value for each year. And as you can see, there's a really good decrease here as well um, going through these, these about 40 years. And this represents about a 92% reduction in benzene in the community. Similarly for 1,3-butadine, which is another toxic. Um, some sources of this include mobile sources, the petrochemical industry, and rubber manufacturing. And this has decreased by 90% over the, the time period as well. And now concentrations are, are very low, not, not even at 0.1 parts per billion. 
Last one I wanted to show here was, was lead in Stockton where we had some measurements back in the late eighties. Um, and now where we are now, um, just a few years ago, we're also seeing a big reduction here representing about an 85% reduction in, in lead in the atmosphere. And if you look on the left-hand side, look at these, looking at these measurements, it may show that we have, you know, 10, about 10 units of measure now compared to 70 in the past, but this is measured in nanograms per cubic meter. So very, very tiny. This is one one thousandth of a microgram. So this is very small in the atmosphere and these measurements are um, very small. I just wanted to point that out that um, these are very small compared to the total PM 2.5 we see in the atmosphere. So overall, we wanted to show this just for you to understand the progress that's been made in the Stockton community and improving air quality. Um, both for criteria pollutants and for different toxics in the area. Um, the, com the Stockton community is already meeting numerous federal standards that EPA sets, which is great. And we certainly need continued improvements in air quality in the community to meet the, the federal standards that are still remaining that Stockton needs to continue to meet. And so as a part of this process, we're gonna go through with AB 617 here in Stockton. We're gonna work together to identify and address other localized air quality issues through developing and implementing various strategies, and those strategies will help reduce emissions even more, improve air quality even more throughout Stockton. And that's it for my, my presentation. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, John. Okay, so what we're gonna do with these, we're gonna go quickly through the three presentations, and then as if time allows, we will go into these breakout rooms. Um, so just hold your questions for the end. I apologize, I know it's a lot of talking to ask you. Um, the next presenter is actually from CARB, the California Air Resources Board. Um, we're gonna hear from Alejandra Cervantes. So Alejandra, do you wanna share your screen? Yes, uh, let me try that out right now. Um, okay, so let me know if you guys are able to see it at this point. Looks good. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Alejandra Cervantes, and as Crystal said, I work with the California Air Resources Board. I'm part of the Community Emission Inventory Group at CARV, and we also have my colleagues here today, Adrian Kayavia, Jenny Melgo, Abhishek Demon, and Victoria Bija, to help answer questions on the emission inventory. So I'll be giving an overview of the community emission inventory development and we'll be focusing mostly on CARB's area and mobile sources. And then the district staff will be presenting next on the stationary sources. So emission inventories are estimates of the amount and type of pollutants emitted into the atmosphere by the air pollution sources. These include industrial facilities, mobile sources and area sources and they are a fundamental component of any air quality plan. Uh, for AB 617, it calls for the use of the emission inventories in the community emission reduction programs to identify emission sources, establish baseline emissions, set emission targets and reduction measures, and also track emission reductions in the community selected for a community emissions reduction program. Uh, the CARB's blueprint for air com community air protection and the related emission inventory documents provide additional details on the development of a community scale emission inventory. District and CARB staff have been working together the last few months to develop an emission inventory for Stockton to help understand the existing sources of air pollution and when and where these occur in the community. Emission sources are usually broken into four major categories. We have stationary sources, which the districts oversees, and these include sources like industrial facilities and power plants, area sources, which both CARB and the district work together on, and some examples include residential wood combustion and consumer products. And we have on-road mobile sources, which CARB works on, and these include uh, vehicles and trucks. And finally, we have off-road mobile sources, which CARV also works on, works on. And this includes equipment like forklifts, tractors, and as well as ocean-going vessels. I'll be going more into detail about what are the sources within these major categories that are contributing to the total in the community in the following slides. And as I said, we are working with the district and expect to finalize the area and mobile source emission inventory by the end of this month. 
And we look forward to discussing the admission inventory with you. So if you have any recommendations, inputs, you can share them with us or the district to further refine and improve the inventory. And just let us know. And all of your comments and notes are very appreciated, appreciated and are always, always very helpful. So for the community emission inventories, we have allocated community specific emissions using a one by one kilometer grid. And these emission inventory numbers developed for the presentation are based on the most up to date information we have. So area and off road source emissions were based on the latest CARB state implementation plan with the base year of 2017. And the emissions were projected from the 2017 base year to 2018 using the most up-to-date growth and control factors available. For on-road, emissions were developed using the 2017 vehicle activity from the San Joaquin Council of Governments and the emission factors from CARB's latest on-road emission factor model, uh, which is MFAC 2017. Typically, we use, these, we use surrogates to spatially distribute emissions to a more specific location, resulting in the high resolution one by one kilometer emission grid for each community. And then some examples of the spatial surrogates we use include population, employment, housing, and vehicle miles traveled. So this allows us to better characterize the sources and emissions within the communities. So there are two types of area sources. We have the first type, which is sources that are small emission sources spreading over an area, but they have a specific location. So for example, this includes auto body shops and print shops. And then the second type are those sources that cover a large area and it is hard to pinpoint a specific location. So consumer products and architectural coatings are example for this. Um, we allocate these two types of emissions to the one by one kilometer grid as shown on the map. And in this map particularly is for particulate matter, 2.5 microns or smaller. And this is for area sources. And this gives us a distribution of which areas in the community have higher emissions. So if you look at the map, the darker grids represent those areas where the top 20% of the emissions are located in the community. And then the following charts display the major source categories contributing to each pollutant in the area sources. So for nit nitrogen oxides, or for short NOx, Manufacturing and industrial sources contribute to 60% of the total emission, followed by residential fuel combustion and service and commercial. For particulate matter, 2.5 microns or smaller, or for short PM 2.5, commercial cooking emissions contribute 46% of emissions, followed by paved road dust and residential fuel combustion. For reactive organic gases, uh, ROG for short, uh, Consumer products contribute 31% of the emissions followed by waste disposal and architectural co coatings. And the map on the right shows the distribution of the emissions for, for ROG, reactive organic gases for area sources, which follows along residential areas due to a large part of the emissions for ROG are coming from consumer product, products, sorry. Um, Off-road mobile sources are those mobile sources that are not your typical cars and trucks. Like in area sources, off-road mobile sources have two types of classifications. We have facility sources and non-facility sources. Facility sources include those equipment operating at a specific location, which has some level or of activity data related to it. For non-facility sources, they don't have a specific location or data related to them. Uh, the, Mission inventory developed um, for off-road mobile sources uses the existing activity data from various reporting requirements, voluntary, voluntary reporting, surveys, and purchase data sources. And the charts show here the major sources contributing to each pollutant and off-road mobile sources. So trains, off-road equipment, ocean-going vessels, and recreational boats are the main contributor, contributors for nitrogen oxides, or an ox for short, re um, re reactive organic gases, particulate matter 2.5 microns and smaller, and diesel particulate, particulate matter, which is DPM. Uh, the map shows the distribution of diesel particulate matter emissions 
throughout the community where the darker grids highlight the locations where major sources of diesel particulate matter occur, like along the port area and the rail yards. For on-road mobile sources, which includes cars and trucks, we estimate vehicle miles traveled using activity data from the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which in the case for Stockton is the San Joaquin Council of Governments, and apply the emission factors from car to calculate emissions within the community. Uh, the chart shows uh, what type of vehicles are contributing to each pollutant in on-road mobile sources. Um, so heavy, heavy duty vehicles like semi trucks and big rigs are the main contributors of nitrogen oxides and diesel particulate matter, while light duty vehicles like the cars you and I drive are the main contributors of reactive organic gases and particulate matter 2.5 microns or smaller. And then the map on the right shows the, the how the emissions for in diesel PM are distributed throughout the community. And then the darker grids follow along the major freeway and highways where most of the emissions occur due to the higher vehicle miles traveled happening there. So this is pretty much the presentation of the overview of area and mobile sources um, for Stockton. So if we, as we continue to work on developing the community emission inventory with the district staff, we greatly appreciate your feedback and input. So please let the district staff or us know if you have any comments or questions. Thanks Alejandra. Okay, we're gonna do the last presentation. Um, we're gonna go back to the Air District staff. Um, Arno Marshallet, I'm sure I'm getting that totally wrong, um, is gonna go next. And then we will go into the breakout rooms where we have time for questions um, and more of a deeper discussion. So, okay. Um, Arno, do you wanna share your screen? Um, I think you all see my screen and I will go from there. Um, ARB, since the ARB already pretty much set uh, the, the topic, it'll be, I think, rather easy for everybody to follow up and it, the, the presentation is rather small. So my name is Arno and uh, I'm the Director of Permit Services working with the Air Pollution Control District in Fresno and I'm uh, very pleased to make that presentation. At the end, uh, you'll have uh, opportunity for question as it was mentioned and I'll be extremely happy to answer those questions. So um, as um, ARB has uh, the opportunity to mention, the emission inventory data are made of essentially three, three main categories. Like it was said, the stationary sources, the mobile sources, and the area-wide sectors. So these are the three major categories that you'll see over my presentation and has just uh, was presented a few minutes ago. Stationary sources, that's rather simple. These are the industrial sources, manufacturing facilities, uh, food processors, and any, anything that has an industrial aspect to process something and result in um, emissions into the air. Those sources are regulated by the district, and as such, we are uh, collecting and processing those emission inventory and, and putting those uh, reports together. The, the, the another important source, mobile source, that's it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, uh, it was presented a few minutes ago, made of truck cars for the on-road, but also tractors or both for the off-road. So those are all mobile sources under the responsibility of um, the uh, California Air Resource Board to collect and process those emission inventory and to compile those such as well the area-wide and as it was just mentioned for the, um, such as the architectural consumer products, uh, residential fireplace, etc. So all those are considered as area-wide. They are not attributed to a specific location, but more at their location uh, site and, and are also compiled by ARB and processed uh, on an annual basis. The district is currently, um, finalizing and the processing of the 2018-19 emission inventory. Um, most of the 18 have been finalized and we are, are, we are still working on the 19. It's an annual process. As you probably understand, there's several uh, thousands of facilities within the valley, but a few hundreds in the, in the Stockton area and we're processing this uh, diligently on an annual basis. So now uh, continuing to illustrate a little bit what you heard a few minutes ago, 
In this graph, you will see in this pie chart, you will see the main category that I just discussed and that are important, the, the mobile source, which is the blue, light and dark for the on and off road. So as you see on the NOx, uh, the nitrogen oxide are predominantly uh, affected by the, by the mobile sources emission. For PM2.5 emissions, uh, on the other hand, here is the area-wide, which is, as we'll see in a minute, is oriented by other source than, than the, the mobile. For VOC, again, the, 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 the driver source and the area-wide, while on those three, you'll see that the station, which is the gray uh, uh, triangle, are quite limited. These are the stationary source that the district is regulating. So here a little bit more detail. I can slow it a little bit, so at least, and I'll shift around. So NOx emission, uh, again, it's just a detail where you see where those, uh, how do you break down those mobile source emission where you see the truck and the car, but also a, a, a very specific aspect in this area, the Stockton uh, area, is those uh, ocean vessel or you know the, on the on the port of Stockton. There's there's definitely a chunk of emission that are attributed to the that are contributing to the NOx emission overall, which is very un unusual in our valley obviously we're not so much impacted by the ocean vessel like other area can be but this very specific has this particularity and i think it needs to be um, quite carefully uh, looked at the the next one on the pm 2.5 as i mentioned air source made of residential cooking um, uh, uh, burning and, and, and residential fires, all those area-wide source are impacting for the PM2.5. While for VOC, it's a combination essentially of the area-wide source, which is the consumer product and the mobile source, just like for NOx. Oops. Now, um, we at the district we prepared um, a resource for your committee. Uh, they are posted on our website, and I will read. The, there's a link on the 617 website page, uh, specific to the Stockton community, and it's under www.community.valleyair.org/selected-communities. Dash, uh, slash Stockton. Sorry for the. So it's a little bit long, but if you have the the, the if you can access our web page, you'll have the the web page really easily to access under six seventeen. You'll see this this uh, uh, the sign, and and here you'll have two set of map, and I'll go quickly through those two set. One is specific to the facilities, so the stationary source, like as I've mentioned, that are regulated by the district. And one essentially combining all the data, mobile, uh, area-wide, and stationary source, and kind of like it was presented by ARB with this grid of a one kilometer grid, and, and identify those emissions per type of pollutant, NOx, VOC, PM 2.5, diesel, diesel particulate. And, and, and the, the, this map, specifically on the facility, will also identify the, recept, the sensitive receptors, such as schools or medical facility. So just to illustrate what I was just mentioning, going on our webpage, or on your webpage, because it's the, dedicated to, the, to this area. So you, you'll have this map, and I ask to have a little um, a specific thing. When, when you'll be on this map, you'll see a bunch of little dots and those each of those dots have a, a legend where you explain you know it can be agricultural product automotive coating this is the paint booth if you damage your car you have the pleasure to deal with this but it's also a cement and concrete a chemical product etc so all those little logo that you see here or little um, uh, circle are, are are aimed at making the ease on you for finding what are you looking for in into this community and when you click on one when you put your cursor and click on it you'll have a little window that will appear that identify what is the the name of the facility what is the type and what are those emissions associated with it for instance on this one that i clicked here 
on the right side of the, the area of Stockton. It's a gas station uh, or gasoline dispensing facility or GDF or gas station to make it simple. And the annual emissions, tons per year, are represented in this area of this window. And in this case, you have 0 0.093 tons of VOC, volatile organic compound, emission per year. You can click on any of those little dots and each of them will show a little bit sub window just like this one and allowing you to navigate and to see the, any source of your interest and to be eventually be able to refine and, and bring question to our attention or, 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 or help to resolve the, and improve the, the air quality of, in Stockton. The, the, oops, the next graph that will be that, that are available and map it's just like it was presented by ARB where by type of pollutant we combine all sources so it combined mobile source area-wide and stationary source under one uh, single graph or map and and then on this one I just took this one no, no. just to be a, way. just have fish around the computer to represent a, to read, um, I know. Okay. Huh? You, if um, I, I, I may ask then to make sure that you are muted to avoid the background. So on this on this map, you can immediately see some interesting aspect for the NOx emission, but you'll see that pretty much on on the particulate matter and the the, the diesel and particulate matter as well. The those NOx emission are driven by couple of factor one is the the, uh, the 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 transportation um, uh, uh, corridors which made of i5 4 and 99 so that's why you kind of see those darker colors here many of showing the in the, those higher emissions and also by the port of stockton that has some also emission associated with the operation of that. So these maps are available on our web. I highly recommend that you use those, get, get your knowledge and uh, improve and, and further report to us or bring question as, um, as, you, as you run into. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arno. Okay. Um, before we go into small groups, I'm going to turn it over to Jessica Olson real quick, and then I'm going to give instructions. There we go. Hi, everyone. Thank you again so much, and thanks to those that just presented. Uh, we know that was a lot of information, and this is not intended to be you have to, we're not quizzing anyone at the end, we're not making any decisions. Today is our introduction to all of this information. And we are now going to break out into small groups where we strategically placed both CARB and district folks um, to help answer some of these specific questions. Keep putting them in the chat. We're getting to them as quickly as possible to make sure we can answer as many questions as possible today. But we felt like breaking into small groups will allow us to dig into some of this information kind of help you navigate it as you look through it pretty much the rest of the time we have AB 617 um, development going on. And, um, and just kind of to help formulate your best approach to digesting this information. So we appreciate your patience and I look forward to these small group discussions. Thanks, Jess. That's great. That was most of my overview. So I will just add that um, if for any reason you feel like you are not diving with your small group, you can opt to come back into the main channel and you can hang out with me or I can reassign you into a different group. We'll feel free. Um, Douglas, you should be in with your interpreters. So if that is not the case, please let me know by coming back out that you guys are all supposed to be in one group. Um, and I think we have enough time for about 15 minutes. So yes, like Jessica said, that was a lot of information. And we currently have 85 people on this Zoom meeting. So in an effort to, to maximize your time asking questions of the experts and really getting a little more time to introduce yourselves and get to know each other, we're going to try this small group. If for any reason people vehemently dislike these small groups, also please let us know afterwards. So I will be calling you back in after 15 minutes. You'll get a warning and then I'll get sucked back into the main channel. So um, here we go.
So Douglas, you're, you're going to have to accept, it's going to put you in a small group, but I think you have to accept that placement. Okay. Oh, I, I, I pushed the wrong button accidentally. Sorry. Um, let me move you into a group. Okay. Okay. Did they join the break room? I, or what? Yeah, your your translate your translators are both in room one. So I'm gonna move since you declined room one, I think I have to put you in room two. And then I will go and move them. So accept the request to move into room two. Okay. And I'm gonna move them down. Thank you. Okay. Hello, very fancy gentleman at the top. I just assigned you guys to rooms. If you, I know you know who I was talking to. Um, if you want to move into groups, you can. Um, you don't have to. You can stay out here with me. Um, but if you want to join a group, you're welcome. Hey, Crystal, this is Cynthia. Could you please reassign me to another group? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Thank you, greatly appreciated. Of course. Um, let's see where you were. Looks like. Sorry. Okay, Veronica, is there a reason? Do you want to stay in the main channel or did I just not get you in the right group?
Hello, everybody. Looks like breakout group number one was the fastest back. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this opportunity to just say hello to everybody before we get back in breakout room mode. Hi, hi all. Good to see you all. Hi, Smear. Samir, I am loving the beard. <laughs> okay, that's great, Jonathan. That's yeah, like I believe the it's Jonathan who may have spoken. I, I, hi, Jonathan. You have a, a, a beard as well. No, don't, don't, don't do that. It's funny because when you're coming, did we leave the? Were we booted out of the breakout room? Yeah, you were, Tina. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was in the mid sentence, and I was really okay. Is there Did you guys to... see? A, a warning. There should be a countdown. I did, but then yes, there was a warning at the, at the one minute mark. It was a warning. They asked you to leave or to stay, stay, but it still kicked you out after that minute. Yeah. It, it yeah. Kicked you out. Oh, did not did not everybody get kicked out then? Uh, no, they should all be coming back in. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Zoom yeah, out of that. I guess I did. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll give everyone a minute to get back into the main channel. And then we'll do a quick check, like a very high level check of how that felt. I'm sure too short from what I'm guessing. Um, and then we're going to transition to our next agenda item, which uh, the, the discussion presentation part will be super, super short. And then we'll go back into breakout groups. So you will get more time with each other to chat. I know, um, you know, with over 80 people on a Zoom call, it's just challenging, I'm sure. 15 minutes is not enough. So. Okay. I'm um, sorry, uh, will we be back at the same uh, breakout people? That is my goal, just for some continuity. To be honest, we didn't do this last time and we're all learning how to use Zoom. So um, that is my goal when I try to initiate this again, so I'll do the same group. I hope it's safe. It takes a while to get you all in the right places. If not, it'll be random. Um, with the exception of Douglas, I will always try to keep you with your interpreters. So. Okay, I think we've got everybody back. Um, how did that feel? Just quick, uh, unmute yourself, feel free to or use your expression. If you think it was um, your reaction down here, thumbs up or clapping, if you liked it and you want us to do more of that in the chat box, I will ask if you were like, that was terrible, not a good experience, or there were too many people or not enough people, or I never wanna be with a person again, although that's pretty hard to say. In the chat box, um, let us know and we'll take that feedback into account as we design uh, future meetings. But again, this is like our effort to really get more voices in the conversation just because there are so, the good problem is there's so many of you. And the bad problem is there's so many of you and yet we want to make sure everybody gets heard. So this is a tool, it's probably not the only tool. And to some thumbs up, uh, feel free at any point in this meeting to give us the chat. Also feel free to follow up with us afterwards if you felt like this didn't work for you for whatever reason. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica Olson back um, and she's gonna do a very high level overview of um, like a short presentation on the sources of air quality concern and then we're gonna get back in the group. Thanks, Crystal. I, for one, enjoyed that. So I look forward to hopefully being with the same people but I also look forward to meeting new people. So either way, it's gonna be great. I. We heard a lot of feedback after last meeting, um, and I want to appreciate everyone that gave us feedback. Um, that is what led us to do these breakout groups that I think have already been successful. And that's also led us to this next exercise. So if you recall, we had this map, um, and I clearly there were some great um, responses that were um, placed on this map. And if you recall, you were allowed to drop sort of a pin depicting the type of air quality concern you might have had within the region um, and make a comment on what that concern was. And so in an effort to A, understand and hear the feedback that not everyone felt like this tool was as accessible as it should be or maybe as easy to use, um, we felt like this is a perfect opportunity not only to talk about um, what we see here in the breakout groups, but then use these breakout groups as just another platform for you telling us some of your air quality sources of concern. 
based on the conversation I just had with my um, breakout group, it's probably a continuing the conversation you just had. We are going to be writing down everything that's discussed. So this is your chance, not your only chance, but really another chance to let us know what those concerns were. Um, just as a reminder, we ask that, and this is just to prompt you, you can say an, really anything, um, but if you're kind of struggling to think what a, an air quality concern is for you, we felt like, and we sent these out with the agenda, but we felt like it would be good for you to start thinking in maybe those different source types that were just introduced. So think of mobile sources like traffic or buses or other high polluting vehicles, maybe trains. You can think of dust from traffic or construction or other activities that might be um, contributing to dust in your community. You can think of smoke maybe, and that could be, we heard a little bit even on that map about smoke from um, illegal burning or smoke from cooking emissions. Those are the sorts of things we want to keep hearing about. Um, it can be just general concerns about sources in your area. So those um, industrial or facility sources we talked about or any other air quality concern. We certainly don't want that one tool to be the only place that you can say any of these things. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and, and really, I think at this point, we can go into our groups. And again, there should be a, a district or several district and CARB folks in there to help take down these concerns. Um, we're gonna compile them at the end of this meeting and keep this conversation going and make them visible for everyone before the next meeting. So this is not going into a vacuum. It's only building sort of the foundation for our emissions reduction program and, and uh, monitoring program. So after that, I'm, I think I'm gonna go, Crystal. Thanks, I just wanna add a couple points. So um, if you didn't have the opportunity to introduce yourself in your last breakout experience, please do so very quickly in this breakout experience. Um, number two, we have Mariah as our community co-host tonight, and I am going to do my best to have her sprinkle in at least two or three of these groups. So if you see her in your group and she like disappears miraculously, she's just um, doing her duty as co-host because at the end of this, which gets me to our third point, I'm going to have each of the small breakouts have one person report kind of what was shared, like what you guys talked about at a very high level maybe just share one um, source of concern that uh, especially resonated with your group or came up and was a topic of discussion. We'll have every group have an opportunity to share something. So at the beginning of your group, after you reintroduce yourself um, or very quickly, uh, make sure there's one person who's prepared to do the share at the end. Not a heavy list, literally like 30 seconds. Just be prepared to say, my group talked about and we thought it was interesting that and we're concerned about blah. Um, and again, Mariah may or may not lurk in your group just uh, heads up. So I'm going to move you back into the same group. And again, if you're super concerned about your group, you can um, get out of it and come back and I can reassign you as we all learn the tech. We have, um, I'm going to give you a little more time in this group. I think I'm going to try to give you 30 minutes if that works. Um, it gives everybody a little bit more time to actually talk. It won't feel as rushed. So about 30 minutes. And again, um, the meta question you're focusing on and so what are your air quality concerns? The CARB and Air District staff will help guide that. And, um, and again, someone will be taking notes or ready to report back on, you know, on your group. So here we go. <laughs> John, are you going back in? There you go. Okay.
Uh, Crystal, I am briefly back because Florence is not able to participate because she joined um, this meeting on two different accounts. Um, Zoom oh, account. Cool. Yeah, she was in our group earlier, but just with her computer account and she cannot um, speak talk when she's on the computer. Did, did she tell you what her phone number was? I renamed, uh, I renamed her phone number. So see oh, right so her phone number also said Florence. Main section. I wonder if we can uh, send it to the room, breakout room number three. Okay, so I see her in three as not joined. And so you're saying she should exist somewhere else in another group? I see, her in the main, ever? I see her in the main session right now. I see her oh, in, she's in the main. Uh, oh, shoot. You know what's funny is once I do my sharing of my screen, it's hard to see. Much. Yeah. Let me see. So, right. So no, no, I, I can stop sharing. I'm okay. going to get it. So Florence, uh, I, group three. Because I texted her. I, I chatted with her saying, hey, you need to link those two accounts together. And um, just want to make sure she's able to participate because it's a longer session. Yeah. Just a second. So this account right now, this is her Zoom account. So maybe she's with her phone account in some of the groups. But she was an hour away. Can you okay. move down to group number three? I see her not joining in three. I'm looking for something else. Okay. For her, because I, let me, I can because move her to a different group. Main, she's in the main session. Can you move her from the main session to group number three? No? No, so what's happening is she has to accept that mm -hmm. she gets moved to three and she didn't accept it. So what I can do is I can send her to a different group. I can't send her back into three, but I can send her to four. If you can text her back or come talk to her and be like, when she gets the prompt, can she accept it? I, if, it I, if I'm not on in group number four, I cannot talk to her. So you need, you will have to move me to group number four. Okay, then I'm gonna move you both. But I, I mean, if she's not in, are you talking to her now? Well, I was- You were in the group. Back when I was in my group, she was in my group, but she couldn't talk. We couldn't hear her. And I assumed because what her computer account was there, but her phone was probably in the main session or something. Oh, no, maybe. I don't have them. I, no? I don't. Her main. Her phone is in a different room. Is what's happened. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There's a couple people with phones. Yeah. So maybe she was able to participate in other group, and we just saw her computer account in our group. Okay, well, I just go back to my room and... Um... Yeah, so she, like, the thing is, I like, if you're a phone and a computer, and I don't know that those are the same person, I'm going to put you in different rooms. Yeah, been, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all um, right. I, so it I might be fine. Okay. I don't know which phone number is hers, is the thing. And I, I, renamed know, I, her, I renamed her phone number to Florence because I was connected. I connected with her via chat, asked her to rename herself. And she's like, oh, I'm on the phone and on the computer. So th there are two Florence, so basically. Okay, so I need to put both Florences in the same. Oh, I see. Florence is also in six. Yeah. So let me move that Florence to three. Okay. Unless there's... Are there two people named Florence? No. Okay. So both Florences are now in three. Okay. 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 These are super fun. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing my, I have a little message that's like discussion groups in progress. Like we'll yeah. be back soon. Great. Okay. Um, and I might pull people back a little bit earlier than 30 minutes. I'm thinking I might give you a message and say, I'm going to give them a warning and give them 25. We have more time for the discussion afterwards. Yeah, and send them the reminder what they're talking about, just in case, one more time. Um, I don't know how okay. to go back. I don't see this group. I have to move you. I oh, here it is. Let me I can move myself. Can you go back in? Oh, good. Okay. Yay. Thanks, Hannah.
Okay, guys. So what happened, I apologize. What happened is I had the groups automatically set for 15 minutes. And when I reused the same groups, it kept the same 15 minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everybody back in. And then just as a group, maybe Mariah, you want to leave this. I do a check. We have until 645 for this item. So about 20 more minutes. So we can either go back into the small groups for 20 minutes and go deeper, or we can spend the 20 minutes debriefing as a full group and then resolving any questions. Um, I was I two groups, so I think that um, she's going to talk here in a minute. She's going to represent our group. Um, I think that there were some good conversations happening, so maybe we could just reset start debriefing the or reset the clock, so whichever. Uh, yeah. So here, jump in here. I think the group thought we'd have the few minutes, and we didn't quite get into the good like, discussion. Yeah, I see that. So what happened, you guys? And I super apologize. I'm learning too. When I recycled the same group, it had the same timer set, and then the once the time the groups were initiated, I had to change the timer. So it, that's why it was still the 15. So what I'm hearing is people are coming back is um, a need for more time in your small group. So what I can do is I'll get you back in there um, and then we'll come back in. So we have, we have about until 6.45 in total. I want to leave at least five, 10 minutes-ish for um, the debrief. So, but let's go back in for another 10 minutes. So if you're just coming back in, um, I bet I, I apologize. When I reused the same groups, it kept the same timer clock, and I didn't realize that till you were all in there, and then I couldn't change it. It wouldn't let me edit it. So I am going to stick you back in your groups for 10 minutes. Sorry for the ridiculous interruption. Um, and then in 10 minutes, I will bring you back in the main channel, and then we will do our debrief. So thanks for bearing with me. I apologize in advance as we. Ah. Learn. This is our this is our ultimate breakout group practice. This meeting, the next meeting, which is going to yeah. nail it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth sail. So, okay, so you'll have you'll have ten minutes in this one. So around um, six thirty six, you'll get a warning. I'll give you guys a warning, and you'll get sucked back into this main channel. And then we'll have about ten minutes to debrief. That sounds fair. Okay. I think it kicked me out. <laughs> it kicked you out? Okay. It kicked me out of that group. It's okay though. I can give you another group. Yeah, so that's fine. Any. Let me give you, okay, give me a sec. I gotta find you sure. on this list. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I think I had you in six. Let me find you. Yeah, so I am gonna move you to seven. No. <laughs> Mariah, did it give it? It should have popped up on it your screen. It didn't pop up. No? Okay, I'm going to try one. Did it go now? Let's see. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> okay, see you in a few minutes. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. So quiet in the main channel when all 80 of you are in the other, the other space. Okay, so uh, we're going to go group by group, and I'm going to ask whoever was prepared to do a quick report out on a source of concern that came up and was noteworthy in your discussion. Um, because the numbers may not be apparent to you guys, and I did move some of you around a bit, I'm going to go by um, the Air District staffer that was in the group, like the technical staffer that was help helping you guys. So first up is Jessica Olson. So whoever is ready to talk, and it was in Jessica Olson's group, please unmute yourself and, uh, you know, 30 seconds a minute to share. Great. I believe that's me. Uh, this is Anne from the mayor's office in the city of Stockton. Um, we talked uh, about a number of things. We talked about um, place-based um, areas of concern and truck idling in particular neighborhoods, um, called out specifically Boggs Tract. Um, we talked a little bit about um, PM 2.5 spikes during the wildfires that happen um, increasingly routinely every fall. Um, and then we also talked about just weatherization opportunities um, in terms of what purifying uh, purifiers may be available to, to residents in the home environment. Um, and then we talked a little bit about what the port was doing um, in terms of uh, accepting freight and just sort of the what happens when um, when ships come in and, and the transportation on land. Um, and then finally, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, vegetative barriers um, as a potential way to sort of think about um, air air filtration opportunities for local communities. If I missed awesome. anything, thank you. Chime in. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. Second group, I think, was. Arno's group was group number two. Who was yeah, at, ready to take that one? Jika would report. Yeah, so I'm going to report for our group. Um, a lot of the same concerns that we just heard from group one. Um, there was a lot of concerns about burning, um, and that that encompasses a, a large assortment between you know encampments, homeless encampments, um, to just illegal burns to, um, you know, grass fields. Um, some of the residents have fields behind their homes that seem like they catch on fire periodically. So burning in general was a concern. Um, box track area was another uh, area of concern uh, near the port there. Um, specifically some of the schools, I, I believe there's a, a school right in that area. Um, and the indoor air quality at that school was a concern. Um, there's a lot of trucks um, that, uh, park near and drive by the school. Um, and so indoor air quality was a concern um, along with the air quality outside as well. Um, let's see what else here. Um, and then there was some concern just with the airport traffic, um, 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 trucks, but also planes. Um, I guess it was brought to our attention that Amazon is adding capacity there. Um, so they're adding more planes to their fleet and um, they are also, you know, increasing their, their warehouse capacity. So that's obviously increasing truck traffic. Um, truck traffic came up a lot. Um, so diesel emissions. And let's see what else here. Um, that looked like the main ticket items there. So. Cool. Thanks, Jacob. Okay. Group number three was staffed by Nick Pierce. Who was working with Nick? Who wants to share? Nick, you're, you might be mute. Okay, there we go. Yeah, um, I can go ahead and uh, summarize um, the concerns. Um, a lot of this, uh, the discussion also focused around the Boggs Track area and specifically the George Washington Elementary School in that area. And, you know, concerns with traffic and the bypass that was supposed to alleviate traffic really um, has had some unintended consequences. Um, there was also a concern about um, the expansions of the port, uh, increasing the truck traffic and and uh, the subsequent uh, pollution impacts uh, on the community around there. Um, 
and uh, also with with uh, with uh, windblown dust from from uh, uh, unpaved areas um, and and uh, what types of of uh, mitigation measures could be uh, deployed uh, to address that. And there was also um, a number of questions about our, our, uh, our monitoring capacity and where it would be deployed and, and uh, how the data would be used. And I think that's all uh, we had time to talk about. Oh, thanks, Nick. Okay, group number four was Leland. Who works with Leland? Who wants to talk? So I, I was unofficially nominated, I think, to speak for our <laughs> everybody. I'm Jessica Coria from the Valley Air District. Um, and I had Margo, Gloria, Stacy, Tina, and Shannon from the court um, in our group, as well as district staff of John and Leland and CARB staff with Hendro and Trish. Um, so we actually spent a lot of our time talking about um, emissions inventory and monitoring and kind of what we're going to be developing through this community steering committee process, which was some really great discussions. We got a lot of good questions from Margo. Um, we did get some really great feedback, especially from Gloria, who talked about her concern um, about a lack of monitoring in the area, particular concern. Um, down in Southside Stockton, um, there's a lot of homelessness or um, kind of informal settlements by the railroads, which are impacted by both fires and by the railroad emissions. So those are some kind of primary sources of concern we heard about and um, kind of focus on monitoring needed along Lincoln Street, um, close to the DMV, kind of closer to the port. So really great feedback from our group. I think it's a working. Awesome, thanks. Thanks, Jess. Okay, I'm gonna to go to John Claffin's group. Who was with John Claffin? And what do you want uh, to say? That was me. We had some great input from community members and one of them is a resident of Delta View and is concerned about the number of trucks which idle overnight in the DMV parking lot when it's closed um, and more in the winter. Uh, and we speculated that was for heat purposes. Um, Additionally, City Hall will, the new City Hall will be there and uh, which means more cars will be entering in that area. We had a concern about the University of the Pacific transport vehicles being old and um, the exhaust caused by those vehicles. Uh, there was a lot of concern about port activity, uh, especially from Duraflame and uh, with Washington Elementary being located near there. And we had a question about commercial cooking data, what exactly that means. And we understand that more data is currently underway uh, and separating chain versus uh, non-chain restaurants. Um, also, uh, now we know that lawn equipment such as leaf blowers uh, is, is also a, a category. And we also discussed um, homeless fires. And last week there was a pallet fire in Stockton and that happens um, quite often. So what regulation is being done to prevent those fires? Thanks, Robin. All good things. Um, I'm going to go to Esteban, Esteban group, group number six. Can we have a resident report, please? Um, yeah, I guess we could have some resident, but I was the, uh, I was the resident, <laughs> note, I was the resident note taker for <laughs> group six. So I will uh, quickly go on this, and if, if any of the uh, res residents want to uh, provide their input, sorry about that additional noise. We have a, other audiences in the room here. <laughs> um, why don't so, why, say why don't why don't you start, and then we'll have any other residents in the group jump in and share any yeah. additional things that they want to share. Yeah, okay. sure. Well, we'll so uh, one of the, one of the main concern is um, primarily uh, with uh, truck. Uh, with truck emissions, including truck traffic and idling. So for example, uh, like the truck wash station, uh, there's a lot of uh, trucks idling there. Um, and at, it's located at French Camp Turnpike. Um, also uh, truck traffic at, at schools, there, but for example, like Head Start, like El Concilio Head Start, uh, and also at St. George. Um, and in addition, also truck traffic to uh, Port of Stockton um, and then there's other sources, um, for example, like recycling companies. 
propane company. Uh, there's a steel company off of Highway 4 and Highway 9. Uh, there's uh, odors, but I'm not sure what, what's coming off from that. And then we also talked about, um, about cooking emissions as well. Uh, there's a, uh, just an open barbecue trailer uh, right next to a supermarket that's uh, on there uh, consist consistently on a daily basis. And it's just creating a lot of uh, smoke all the way to uh, other schools like St. George and McKinley. That's about half a mile away. Um, and then there's open fire cooking from uh, the uh, homeless community as well that's concentrated in the south and east area of the community. And in fact, there's one right behind uh, St. George School. So uh, there's concern over those. And uh, we also talked about um, potential other like potential uh, measures like urban greening, uh, solar panels, bike trails. And then there's um, um, we had, there was a question about um, just getting a com pollution comparison. I know we had today, I just talked about the trends of emissions, but wanted to also see how that compared to other areas, uh, nearby areas, uh, for example, like in Merced, what are the emission trends over there? And just to see how it's correlated, see if emissions are generated in Stockton or is it more of a regional uh, emission issue there? And um, also there was a mention of um, sulfur um, from the Port of Stockton, uh, just impacting the, the nearby schools in that area as well. And I believe, uh, I believe that's it. And so anybody feel free to chime in if there's something that I may have missed or if you wanted to expand on it. A lot of this came from uh, Elaine and, and uh, Noemi and, um, and Sylvia as well. So feel free to add in. Anybody else want to jump in from group six? Not hearing anything. Okay, uh, last, yeah, last. Uh, oh, go ahead. I, yeah, uh, uh, oh, the sulfur is from hydrogen sulfide um, from refineries sometimes. Uh, I mean, downwind of the refinery in Lamont, I smelled hydrogen sulfide gas <laughs> or uh, or some kind of formaldehyde from the marshes. I think it's the hydrogen sulfide. No, a fracking, and, um, but there's no fracking over there. No, it's gotta be the refinery where I smelt the hydrogen sulfide. That's probably where it's coming from. Okay, thanks, Laura. I think that's you. Um, okay, group seven. Who was working with Ryan, Ryan Hashi from the Air District? Um, yeah, so it was me, um, yeah. Uh, my name's Celine. Um, I'm with uh, Fathers and Families of San Joaquin. Um, I want to let you guys know ahead of time that I do apologize to my team if I do leave anything out because there was just so much that I could type. Um, but yeah, I am going to start with Dylan. Um, he brought up uh, cooking um, within South Stockton and he mentioned that um, you know, that's a place where a lot of ethnic communities, you know, uh, purchase food and stuff like that. And um, I guess there's often not a grill. Um, and I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he said there's not a lot of grills or if he said that there are a lot of grills, but he said that um, there was a lot of smoke coming out of it. And is that something that we need to prioritize? And then also somebody else uh, mentioned as well that you usually see about like 30, 50, you know, pieces of chicken uh, cooking on the grill. And there's just so much smoke that we, we can't really see um, what's going on in uh, South Stockton sometimes that so bad. Um, and then also, they also mentioned that maybe we need to start monitoring, um, you know, this situation because maybe it could be as dangerous as, you know, trains idling or, um, um, trucks or anything like that that are idling. And also, um, somebody else also mentioned as well that, you know, they've been receiving complaints in the area um, regarding to cooking emissions. And, you know, th these things are happening in like um, areas where people are living at. Um, I believe this was Kat Catherine. She also said that, you know, diesel trucks and trains, um, she can, she can he hear it idling while she's teaching in her classroom. Um, and then I believe Scott mentioned um, about refrigeration needs, but then we ended up getting cut off in our, um, in one of the calls. And then also somebody else mentioned about like, 
um, you know, um, homeless people basically burning um, plastic pallet uh, fires that, um, and I think that some police, I believe that this happened um, recently and that a bunch of police or a bunch of people came to come and monitor um, and was wondering, um, you know, what did they pick out from that fire? Um, and also there's a higher rate, I believe, with uh, homelessness when it comes to cancer. So, you know, we were thinking like, does it come from the sun, air, water? Um, what is it really coming from? And also um, a lot of homeless people are also burning uh, cans um, and they're also cooking inside of tires as well. And so, um, and then I believe this was Jamie that uh, mentioned that, you know, we need to have a solution to this and we still need to be able to treat, you know, homeless people with, um, you know, dignity and, and respect. Um, and then also my last comment is gonna be that um, Catherine also added in the chat earlier that, you know, concerns on emissions from uh, wildfires, since climate change generally is making uh, this part of the state hotter and drier. And that's pretty much it. Thanks, Celine. Okay, so before we close this section, I want to give Mariah a chance to do a reflection because she is our community co-host and she was popping in and out of a couple of the different groups. Mariah, is there anything you want to reflect on? Anything that stuck out to you? Um, everybody had a really good conversation going on in all of the groups. And so um, I'm really excited that everybody was able to um, really lean in and um, ask ask the questions that maybe they have had they've had for a long time and they didn't even know um, how to ask them and so um, I just want to again thank everybody for really taking this as seriously as as it is and um, making sure that everybody had good conversation and that we're able to be productive even in an environment that's a little <laughs> a little um, new to a lot of people so Thanks, Mariah. Okay, I want everyone to give Mariah a round of applause with your reactions and or your actual hands. And thank you, Mariah, for being our community co-host tonight. Uh, if you recall back in May, we asked for some volunteers and we got them, so thank you. The next one in July, our community co-host is gonna be SC. So we'll have um, SC in July. There's a few housekeeping items I wanna do and then uh, we will wrap up. Um, July 1st is our next scheduled meeting. It's currently scheduled to be a Zoom. It will probably be a Zoom, as we mentioned at the beginning, because of the, the COVID health concerns. Um, so thanks in advance for all of your patience tonight as we continue to learn how to use all of this. Um, I did want to note something. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, let's see this one. Let if you notice on the agenda that you got for this meeting, there is this like cool little graphic. I just wanted to show you guys, because this is a long process of, this is where we were in the beginning in February, where we really created the community steering committee and, and got started. In March, we finalized the, the boundaries and the charter for real. Um, in April, we connected as a community um, in our sort of virtual, you know, foray into this virtual space. Um, and in May, we really went deep into the historical perspective and the health impacts of the different um, pollution impacting Stockton. Um, right now, obviously tonight, we went through the emissions inventory and um, talked a little bit about the air quality concerns and, and the sources. Moving forward next month, we're gonna go deep into the monitoring plan development and then this longer August to November, developing the CERT measures, it seems long, but it's not long. It's a bit of a sprint. It's a lot of work. And currently the goal is to finalize the CERT in December. I assume some of you will have questions or comments about this timeline and whether it's gonna be extended because of um, just what happened in the world with the shelter in place. And um, I would direct those questions. I don't know if we're ready to answer those questions, um, but. If anyone in CARB wants to, at this point we can. Otherwise, we'll just sort of know that, stay tuned um, as far as the actual deadline of the circle. But right now, it is still um, December. So that's where we are going, and this is where we've been. And I just wanna thank everybody so much for your participation. 
um, these are fun meetings to do. I love the enthusiasm in Stockton. You guys are such a wonderful group of people. Um, before we formally close, we have two minutes left, but I want to double check. Um, Anthony, were there any comments submitted over the Facebook live feed? No, we don't have any uh, comments over Facebook. No comment. Okay. Are there any folks here on this Zoom call who want to make a final public comment? So just unmute yourself. Okay, I'm not seeing any. That's fine. So it's, just so you know. Sorry. Oh. Is it okay if I um, just um, finish? Real quick. Um, yeah, I yeah. just wanted to say that I just appreciate um, everybody, you know, time and just knowledge and me picking their brain and just so being so um, informative. Um, I learned a lot. Um, this was my first time joining you all. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, more often. Great. Thank you so much, Celine. That's such a great way to end. And I, Any I, final thoughts? From Go ahead. I will yeah. say that this, like I promised, this is not a, in a vacuum. We are already working on compiling everything we just <laughs> So I promise we will share it with everyone. We will get it posted. It will be a running list as we move forward. Yes, as Jessica says, if you're new to this process, there, um, there's a recording. Obviously we have been recording this whole time. Um, so that is there. It will be posted on the website. Um, Hannah and I take the chat record and this dialogue and we turn it into a meeting summary. And that also gets posted on the website. So everything is captured. Crystal, one more thing that I mentioned in my breakout, I also want to, want to mention here. For Stockton, we've also put um, a new tab on the, your AB617 website that lists all the emails that have gone out to community members with links to the different uh, presentations and different things mm -hmm. that um, have been sent out in an email. So maybe you don't exactly remember oh, there was that presentation that we had at a meeting a couple months ago. You can just go and click on that communications with members. Anyone can, it's also for the public, and see past emails and get to past presentations really quickly, easily. That's excellent, Jamie. Thank you so much. Because yes, this is a long slog and we understand that some people will miss certain meetings just because of you know life, uh, but having a great record um, is always helpful. You can go back and, and, and look and see what was captured. So it is seven o'clock and I think a good meeting practice is always to end on time. So I'm going to close the meeting with a final thank you so much for your participation. So grateful that you took the time tonight to make your community just a little bit better. So I'm going to stop the recording. Have a great night, guys. Thanks, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.